started being instated in the early 1960s when people started noticing that people who are working in different kinds of factories, um, coming in contact with different kinds of chemicals, were experiencing cancers at a higher rate than the general population. So like lymphomas and different things when they're in contact with a lot of chemicals. So safety data sheets are typically reserved more for people who are working it with chemicals in large quantities every day, but they also need to be available to people like us who are working with things in smaller quantities and just need to know the hazards and the risks. Um, so I found this little snippet earlier and I love it. So the first recorded version of a form of a safety data sheet was 4,000 years ago in Egypt. And there's this famous pharmacologist named Emotab, and he actually recorded on papyrus like where he got the chemical and what it's supposed to be used for and how you can store it. So this is not a new idea. People have been coming up with this idea for over four, at least 4,000 years. That's just the earliest one we found. Um, so it's, it's obviously useful if humans have been using these for so long. Um, so when you look at a safety data sheet, you're going to see things like physical hazards, health hazards, and every single safety data sheet is going to have these 16 sections. And sometimes things are a little mixed up in the different sections, but they're always going to have these 16 sections and they should be titled about the same. Um, but the thing that I want to point out the most is the NFPA or the National Fire Protection Association reading. And these are designed for firefighters. So if there's a fire in this room and a firefighter comes to try and put it out, they have no idea what chemicals are in this room. So any room that's considered a laboratory space is gonna have one of these pieces of paper with the NFPA diamond on it. There's one behind Ronnie, there's one on the door before you walk in, there's one on this door. And that tells you the rating of the highest rated chemical in that category that's in the room. So there's red for fire, blue for health, yellow for reactivity, and white for physical hazards, or specific hazards, sorry. Um, and so before walking in this room, I can already tell a lot about the chemicals that are stored in here. Um, the most flammable material that's in this room in the red triangle is rated at a two. And I can use my fancy blue cheat sheet that has all the NFPA ratings on it to say, all right, well, flammability of two is caution. Combustible liquid flashpoint is above 100 degrees Celsius and presents a moderate hazard. So before I even walk in here, I can know that there's nothing in here that's a three or a four rated in flammability. So I know that two is the most flammable thing in here. I can look at the reactivity hazard in yellow, use my cool blue cheat sheet and say, all right, well, that's a one. So the most reactive item in this room is a one, caution may react if heated or mixed with water, but not violently, a slight hazard. Okay, then I can look at three, the health hazard. I can see that the most health hazardous thing in this room is a three, warning, corrosive or toxic, avoid skin contact or inhalation. And there are no specific hazards in this room, which would include oxidizers, acids, alkali, corrosive, and chemicals that can, can't come in contact with water. So before you even walk in a room, you can use your fancy blue cheat sheet and figure out how dangerous the chemicals in this room are. But on your safety data sheet, which you can see in green, safety data sheets also contain the NFPA rating you can see on this one for phenol, which is a chemical that you use in this room, um, in the top right corner, there's an NFPA diamond, um, which shows you that phenol is a two in flammability, zero in reactivity, and a three in health. So you know that it is combustible above 100 degrees Celsius, not reactive and corrosive or toxic, right? So you can very easily find basic things about that. I personally check out the end of section one 
which shows cautions, and it reads, phenol has a marked corrosive effect on any tissue. Eye contact may cause severe damage or blindness. So, if I know that I'm working with phenol, I can read this and I can know that I should be wearing goggles because I don't want to get in my eyes. And I should be wearing pants, closed-toed shoes, long sleeves, like a lab coat, and gloves because I don't want to get it on my skin, right? So, it's pretty easy to check this out and know what kind of um, PPE you might need. But you can flip over to section 8 on the back, which is special protection data, and it will tell you exactly what you should be using, what PPE you should be using when working with this chemical. So goggles, protective eyeglasses or safety goggles. Um, impervious gloves, boots, aprons, and gauntlets to prevent skin contact. So pretty easy. And also just the last section I want to point out with this is in first aid. It's in section six. Um, about halfway through section six, it says first aid. And it will tell you every single um, way of contacting this chemical, what you should do. So if it gets in your eyes, it says gently lift the eyelids and flush immediately and continuously for at least 15 minutes. So if you do come in contact with one of these chemicals, you can very easily figure out what you need to do to protect yourself. Um, our safety data sheets are very accessible online. You can Google them and find them from a ton of different manufacturers, but I've also printed out all of them. And they're in the back in the red and white binders beneath the first aid station. So if you're curious and you wanna see them like physically, they're back there in those binders. Now I'm just gonna very briefly show you a different safety data sheet. It's in yellow. This is for iodine, which is a component of Graham's iodine. I really like Thermo Fisher's safety data sheets because they're not so cluttered um, and they're easier to read and there's like big bold headlines. So most of the ones that I use usually look like this. But for me, I check section two, hazards identification. So you can see all of the specific hazards of Graham's iodine. Um, and then on page three of the yellow sheet, um, at the bottom of section five, right above section six, you can see there's the NFPA ratings in firefighting measures. So you can go in here, even though this one doesn't have the diamond printed on it, you can go to firefighting measures and check out all the NFPA ratings um, that would be in the diamond if you did have it. <coughs> um, so that is the easiest quick check through that one. And this, no matter the format, the safety data sheets are always gonna have the same information. Um, so with that, we're going to go to our last sheet, the pink sheet. And I encourage you to look through the safety data sheet in more detail when you have time. And I also encourage you that if you look in your lab manual and you see that you're going to be working with a certain chemical, it's a good idea to just skim over the safety data sheet and be like, all right, well, when I pick up the iodine, I should really be wearing gloves. Or I should really be wearing goggles, which Dr. Shin will generally communicate to you. But it's a good idea to just know your risks. Um, so on your pink sheet, this is a summary of most of the chemicals you will come in contact with in the lab. And anything that's a solution, like Graham's iodine, is broken down to um, specific components. It will have your hazard and the health, flammability, and reactivity rating from NFPA over on your right side. Um, so if you want to know what, I don't know, let's say malachite green. If you want to know how dangerous the things in malachite green are, you can just flip to your pink sheet. You can say, all right, well, it's health of two, flammability of zero, reactivity of zero. You know that it is health of two, warning may be harmful if inhaled or swallowed, not combustible and not reactive. It's pretty stable. So you can very easily figure out um, your dangers in that. And it's front and back, um, but it should be mostly everything that you'll use in class. Um, so I just wanna go ahead and tell you that 
my job is to keep everyone safe and happy and healthy, right? So if you need me, if you have any questions, you can get in contact with me. My name is Amy Matheny. My office is G111. I'm usually downstairs in my office somewhere up here. Um, and that's my email. I'm really responsive in the mornings, not so much during the day because I'm running around getting things together. Um, but you can always shoot me questions or comments um, at my email or just show up at my office and around. Um, so do you guys have any questions about any of this? I know it's a lot, but you all have your own copy to go over later if you forget any of it. There's a seat sign. Oh, yeah. So, um, do you want to go ahead? Should I do the locker thing? Yeah, you do the locker thing. Okay. So. Uh, wait a second. Let me just finish this one. 